is it game over? Are we done? Is A star the answer to life's problems? <laughs> I love A star. Like, it's my favorite. Whenever anyone, like, people in the algorithms class love to do this. Oh, Wheeler, what's your favorite algorithm? I just have to say A star because it's just, it's simple and beautiful. It has all these great properties. It's way faster than Dijkstra. But I'm sorry, it's a best first search. It maintains an open list. If you give me H equals zero, I am going to consume a lot of memory. Right? I just am. I'm going to have this whopping huge open list, and I'm keeping this closed list, and that's going to get huge, and so we're going to blow memory. So uh, to be a responsible teacher of AI, I have to tell you about some alternatives to A star, because when you go out in the world, I actually tell you, I got paid, well, not me, but my group, my company got paid like millions of dollars to develop something, and we used A star, <laughs> and it worked. It worked great, because we had to find an answer in 257 milliseconds. Uh, and, you know, you just can't use up that much memory in 257 milliseconds. So A star was actually perfect. Um, but eventually, you'll come up with someone who's a little more patient than my boss was, and you'll be running for, like, multiple minutes. And you could theoretically run out of memory, and that would be bad. So to be a responsible AI professor, I have to teach you about some alternatives to A star if you ever get in a situation where you could run out of memory. And so what's the problem with A star? Why does it run out of memory again? I just said. Ryan, do we, you remember? That's true. Well, you got to do that to be optimal. So, so we're going to, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to give up optimality. Well, first thing we do is shoot, shoot all the lawyers. And then the second thing we do, we abandon optimality. We leave ab optimality by the side of the road crying as we drive on. Um, and that's the third thing we're going to do. Why does A star run out of memory? Closed yeah. Closed list. And what other list do we have to maintain? Open, Open and closed lists. Yeah. If we're going to do duplicate checking, you really got to have that closed list. Some domains, don't, some domains are just structured as a tree. They're like, there are not two ways of getting to the same place. There just aren't. Like, um, oh, what are some good domains that don't have duplicates? Uh, can you think of a good domain that doesn't have duplicates? Of course, right now, I can only think of domains that have duplicates. Well, traveling salesman, traveling salesman problem, right? So uh, that's getting a little tiresome. Uh, traveling, whoa, traveling salesman problem. Like I'm at the starting city. Which city do I go to next? I don't know. Choose one. Okay, I chose one. Which city do I go to next? I don't know. Choose one. A bunch of branches. At any point in this tree, I have a unique prefix of cities that I have visited. Um, but this also doesn't work because you can actually have duplicates here too. Because <laughs> uh, you can come to a place where you have the same set of cities remaining. So like uh, if you visit A and B, you've got C remaining. But if you visit B and then A, you could still have C remaining. So you can actually have duplicates here too. Damn it. Map coloring. Map coloring. Oh, we're going to talk about that at 2 o'clock. It's OK. Uh, yeah. Beautiful, a maze. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to draw a maze, but let's <laughs> <laughs> let's say you're <laughs> you've gone someplace. <laughs> you could go that way, or you could go that way. Like if I decide to go that way, like I'm not going back. So so yeah, maybe you're in a maze. There are no duplicates. <laughs> um, in which case, uh, you can get rid of your closed list. So, okay, so the open and closed lists are taking too much memory. The closed list is a tricky ball of wax. Most AI classes don't even talk about the closed list. So you guys are getting the, the real deal here. Um, but let's focus on open. Okay, so the open list is getting too long. What can we do to save memory? <laughs> Make it smaller. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Way to go. That's called beam search. Okay, you truncate the open list to hold exactly k nodes. You're like, hey, I'm going to store k nodes, and if there's anything else, goodbye. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so uh, beam search is actually an awesome algorithm. Now, the way I just described it actually sucks, so don't do it that way. Um, what you really want to do for beam search, and I should say this on the slide in a little more detail uh, next year, but um, 
Uh, for beam search, most people actually do beam search as a breadth first search. I just said it. Oh, there's an actual use for breadth first search. Unbelievable. So, so you take you take a node, you take the, the initial state and generate its kids and generate their kids. So oh, it's a breadth first search. And eventually your search frontier gets too big. So we forget some of the nodes. We make it smaller. Now how do we decide who lives and who dies? Not by vote. <laughs> how do we decide? Someone said G, someone said heuristic. Chocolate and peanut butter taste better together. I'm going to call it F. <laughs> F equals G plus H, right? So all the good F nodes live. All the high F nodes die, right? And you have exactly K nodes here. That's called the beam. And what you get is a certain, they all have kids, and some of them are good, and some of them are bad, and go away. And the top K get to live, and then they have kids, and then the top K get to live, and you end up with this kind of like a flashlight beam down into your search space. That's beam search. Very simple. Doesn't use a ton of memory. It's actually really a great algorithm. So you heard it here first. Beam search. Not totally not guaranteed to be optimal. Are you kidding? We just we could have thrown away the optimal solution. I mean, that was me. Like, if you met me when I was little, you'd say, hi, F, throw him away. Leave him by the side of the road. <laughs> but now that I'm grown up, man, I'm awesome. So <laughs> optimal, in fact. <laughs> so uh, anyway. Uh, admitted. I didn't apply, actually. Yeah. Would I have been admitted? I hope so. Yeah, I don't know. I got in somewhere. Um, Okay, beam search. So that's so that's the end. So if A star, you know, my favorite algorithm, if that runs out of memory, try beam search. Everybody cool? Are we done with heuristic search? Yes, pretty much. There are all these other things that we didn't really talk about much. We talked about IDA star a little bit. We did not talk about simplified memory bounded A star or recursive best first search or real time A star or A star epsilon, or learning real-time A star, or any of these other fancy schmancy search algorithms, because we just don't have the time. We've got to start talking about map coloring. So uh, if you like solving problems wicked fast, try a course project. Um, OK. So this is kind of where we are at the moment. We talked about uninformed state space search, depth first search, breadth first search, uniform cost search. We talked about adding a heuristic to make a, a, a more informed search, like greedy best first search in A star. And we talked about bounded memory searches, like iterative deepening and beam search. So that's, that's where we are. Any questions about that? OK. So let's go on to today's lecture. Uh, we're not actually behind. We're right on, right on track. Uh, OK. Anybody have any questions about this table? Professors love to put things like this on, on exams because <laughs> you just you write you don't have to type much you just type out the columns and the rows and then the students have to fill in the qu like I do linear amount of work and you do a quadratic amount of work um, so uh, that's you know professors love that kind of thing so just so you know don't say I didn't warn you. I didn't say that. I didn't say that either. Uh, I just say it's the kind of thing that professors love to put on exams. Now, do I always get to do what I love? Not always. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a lineup here. Okay. So, <laughs> so greedy search is not admissible in the algorithm sense of admissible. Greedy search is not admissible. A star is admissible if the heuristic is admissible. Now, you know, I love A star, but I can't guarantee you that it's going to use less than exponential space in the depth of the solution. I can't guarantee it. 
it's going to use about the same amount of space as it uses time, because all A star does all day is sit around and allocate memory. <laughs> like, oh, let's expand a node and put it on the close list and put the children on the open list. And so it's using memory all the time. And how much time is it going to take? Well, I don't know. If you have a non-trivial heuristic, it's going to take less time than uniform cost search, or fewer expansions at least. Um, so typically, if you have a decent heuristic, A star is much faster than an uninformed search. But I can't guarantee it's going to use less than exponential memory. So that's why I had to tell you about bean search. Um, all right, we talked about that. Talked about that. We talked about that. This is, this is actually not how I think of the world. This is sort of how I, we went through things. Like we did the uninformed searches and then the informed searches and then the memory bounded searches. I actually think about it this very slightly different way where there's like depth first search and then they're the best first searches. Because all these like breadth first and uniform cost search, okay, they're uninformed, but it's like basically the exact same implementation as A star. You just don't add in the heuristic. You just have a different sorting function. Or it's the same sorting function but with a different number. So I think of these all together as a best first search. So whatever way you want to think about it, but that's, that's the way I do it.